Hi, my name is Jules. Welcome and have a happy Sabbath. Sehi moved with her family to the countryside after living in a big city in South Korea. Her mom was excited about the move. Moving here is an answer to prayer, she said, but Sehi wasn't so sure about that. She felt sad that she had to leave her friends in the city. In the countryside, Sehi learned new things. Her mom planted a vegetable garden. And Sehi and her younger brother took care of the lettuce, cucumbers, and corn. Sehi made sure that the vegetables got enough water. She picked weeds so the vegetables would have plenty of room to grow. Before Sehi knew it, the garden was filled with long dark green cucumbers, round heads of light green lettuce, and green ears bursting with yellow corn. Sehi loved to eat fresh vegetables picked straight from the garden. Her mom said the neighbors also might like to eat fresh vegetables. Sehi helped pick cucumbers, lettuce, and corn to give away. The neighbors were so happy to receive the vegetables. Sehi felt good as they smiled and thanked her. Sometimes they even gave her gifts of homemade bread and pickled vegetables. Sometimes she returned home with more food than when she left. The Bible teaches that the more you share, the more you receive. Proverbs 11.24 says, Those who give generously receive more. Still, Sehi was sad because she didn't have any young friends at church. The only other kid was her brother. Her mom saw Sehi's sad eyes and suggested that she pray for her school classmates and invite them to vacation Bible school at the church. Sehi wrote special invitations for her classmates, but she was shy about giving the invitations away. What if the kids didn't come? Don't worry, her mom said. It's not your job to persuade them to come to Vacation Bible School. That's God's job. Sehi and her mom handed out the invitations to her classmates. Not one of them came to Vacation Bible School, but one of the boys came to church on Sabbath. The boy lived with his grandparents and didn't know anything about Jesus. He didn't have any friends at school. He was so happy to learn about Jesus at church, and he immediately announced that he wanted to come every Sabbath. At home, Sehi's mom told her that even though no one had come to Vacation Bible School, God had blessed the invitations by bringing the boy to church. He received that very last invitation that you passed out, her mom said. Sehi was delighted. He wouldn't have met Jesus if we hadn't shared the invitations, she said. That night, she prayed a special prayer for her new friend. Dear God, thank you for leading him to church, she prayed. Please let him and his family know and trust you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
even if I try, but still my soul refuses to die.
Acts 2 verse 4 They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak different languages. The Holy Spirit was giving them the power to speak these languages. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Today's children's story is called Always There. At the beginning of his ministry, as he worked in the carpenter shop, Jesus heard the news about the preacher by the Jordan River. Listening to the reports, he knew that the preacher was the person sent to prepare the people for the good news of the gospel. Jesus put away his tools, said goodbye to his family, and headed for the Jordan. Though the preacher was his cousin, John, they had never met. Jesus Jesus at first stood quietly listening. John talked about the Messiah to come. He preached words of encouragement for sinners. He reserved harsh, severe words for hypocrites who had come to judge his work. Jesus watched as John baptized the repentant. Then Jesus insisted on being baptized too. Although John protested, he fulfilled Jesus' request. John had been praying for a sign to know the Messiah when he came. As Jesus came out of the water and up onto the bank, the sky opened, and God sent the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove to rest on Jesus. John accepted it as the sign he had been waiting for. After Jesus' baptism, the Spirit impressed him to spend some time talking with his father and to gain a deeper understanding of his mission on earth. For the next 40 days, Jesus fasted and communed with God. At the end, Satan came to him and tempted him three times. Each time, Jesus was able to overcome the temptation with words from the scripture that the Holy Spirit helped him to recall. In Gethsemane, Jesus knew that he had to come to the end of his work on earth. In a few hours, he would be taken away by force, betrayed by one of his disciples. He would be tried as a common criminal and put to death by the Romans in the most public, humiliating way of that time. This was what he had come to do on earth, so he wasn't concerned for himself. He was concerned about the 12 disciples who had been with him for the past three years. He knew that they wouldn't understand what was going to happen. He tried so often to tell them, but they weren't able to grasp that he was not going to be an earthly king. Jesus asked his father to send the Holy Spirit to earth after his return to heaven. The Holy Spirit would comfort, enlighten, and guide not only Jesus' disciples, but also all believers until his return to earth at the end of the world. Jesus could hardly wait to tell his disciples the good news about the Holy Spirit, every believer's best friend. He thought about how God's Spirit would comfort and guide them. Unlike Jesus, the Holy Spirit would never have to leave them. In heaven, 40 days after ascension into heaven, Jesus decided it was time to keep his promise to his disciples on earth. The disciples were all gathered in the upper room praying, praising and confessing their sins. Jesus sent the spirit in the form of a rushing wind that swept through the room and as it settled, tongues of fire on each person's head. The disciples were immediately energized. Their fear less left them. Their understanding increased. They poured into the streets praising God and preaching the gospel. Pilgrims gathered from all over the world for the Feast of Harvest. As they stopped to listen to the disciples' speech, each of them heard the good news in their own language. The disciples healed the sick, cast out demons, and performed other miracles in the name of Jesus and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised to send the same Spirit to us today. 
All we have to do is ask. Today we will be conducting an experiment with oil and water. Mix together a quarter cup of oil and a quarter cup of water. Let's observe what happens as we mix together mix together these ingredients. What did you observe? The oil rises to the top and does not mix together with the water. What what keeps the oil from sinking to the bottom of the cup or mixing with the water? The oil has a lower density than water so it rises above the surface of the water. Next you're going to add your food coloring. Five drops should be good. Next, you'll add your Alka-Sester. As the layer of oil in our experiment acts as a covering on top of the water, so the Holy Spirit covers us with his presence. He helps us understand God's word, guides, directs, comforts, and protects us. As the water in our experiment has covered covered by the flare of oil, so we can experience the Holy Spirit as a cover of protection in our lives. Our PowerPoint this week is